What's going on guys? Welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. You know, this is a little bit of a special thing. It's show and tell time here at RUC. And I want to show you guys something that was very special to me. This. My Halliburton briefcase. The stories this thing can tell. Um, the story of how I got it is an epic one. Um, when I was 20 years old, my very first week selling cars online, doing the eBay thing, I made a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. So what would a normal 20 year old do that just made a thousand dollars? Well, a smart businessman would reinvest it or maybe save it. I go and buy an $800 briefcase because I'm a businessman now. And sure enough, that's what I did. I went down to the local mall and they didn't even have these in Greenville, South Carolina then. They had to order it. And they ordered me my Halliburton Zero briefcase. Leather lined, waterproof, fireproof, bulletproof because every internet car salesman needs a briefcase that costs as much as a house payment. But I was proud of it because I was a child of the 80s. I mean, you got to think about it. Everybody that grew up in that time, you know, what was you doing every Friday night? You were watching Dallas. We had all these oil tycoons walking around. And what were they carrying? Their Halliburton briefcase. Let's say, you know, you're homesick from school. You're staying at grandma's house. Well, after you get done watching old Bob on The Price is Right, now you're watching soap operas with your grandma. What does every businessman in the soap opera have? A Halliburton briefcase. That's been chiseled into my brain that this was the mark of success. So I wanted that. And I haven't opened this thing in years. Matter of fact, I had to remember what my combination is on it. Like I had to think long and hard to remember the combination. It's actually got a three digit combination on it. And when I set the number for it, I was trying to think of a three digit number that I would use for a combination for this. And of course, because I'm a little bit gangster, I choose 187, because I'm a killer. But, so I got my Halliburton briefcase. Couldn't tell me nothing, I'm a businessman now. And you know, the things that this briefcase has seen. I mean, I've had that briefcase before where it was so full of $100 bills that I couldn't jam another one in it. I've had this briefcase in my hand before, especially going to work in a little Ford dealership you might have heard a story about, where old rabbit got his name, with a notepad and a pack of crackers that I was gonna eat for lunch that day, and a hope and a dream in it. Um, but you know what, that was kind of my crutch. You know, like I walked in with my briefcase. Like I had it figured out. I was faking it till I made it. Um, it took me a long time to realize that, you know, it's not about the Halliburton briefcase you have. It's not about the watch you wear or the shoes you got on or the jacket or the glasses. Those are all just material. Those are markers. You know, they're game pieces in the game of life. And they're nice to have. Hell, everybody loves them, you know. But I thought that was necessary for me to be the businessman I wanted to be. And it kind of reminds me of a funny story back in my CarMax days. We had this guy that worked in the service department. You got to think about it. When they opened up the CarMax here in Greenville, South Carolina, we had guys, technicians coming in from dealerships all over. And, you know, they had this humongous sign-on bonus to get technicians there. And we had every type of technician you could think of from Jiffy Lube guys to master techs and all this stuff. And there was this one guy in particular, they had a rollback bring his toolbox in. And his toolbox was probably 20 feet long. I mean, literally, his toolbox was the size of a tiny house now. And it had Ferrari emblems on it. And like, you see this toolbox, I'm like, man, this guy can fix any damn thing. And the funniest part about this guy was the guy that was next to him. He come pulling up in a beat up S10 truck. 
and he reaches in the back of his truck and pulls out a five-gallon bucket full of tools and sits them down in his bank. That's every tool he owned was in that bucket. You know what? CarMax opens up. Service department gets busy. Everybody gets to work. Come to find out, the guy with the Ferrari box, he couldn't fix dinner, much less a damn car. The guy with the bucket, he still works there to this day, although he has moved up to a Harbor Freight roll cart now. But that just goes to show you, you can't judge a book by its cover. This doesn't make me a better businessman. I thought it did. It gave the illusion that it did. It was a crutch for me. But the businessman was me. And you know, I went on after, you know, making my first big hit to making thousands of dollars selling cars. And that's, that's the thing that I want to stress to people. I get messages all the time from people. Hey, you know, I bought my first flip and I sold it. I made 300 bucks. I guess I kind of suck at it. Um, no, you don't. You made $300 on your car. You've done something that two thirds of America can't do. What's that? Make money by selling a car. Because that two thirds of America trades their car in. And either they trade it in because they don't have the skill or the ability to sell it, or they trade it in because of convenience. You know, when you trade a car into a dealership, you're losing money on it. They're buying it below wholesale, no matter what they tell you. They're buying it below wholesale because they're gonna resell it. Um, whether it be at an auction or even on their front lot. So you're paying for that convenience. I mean, so it's just like buying a gallon of milk at the gas station for four dollars, or if you went three miles down the road to the grocery store and buying it for two. You're paying for the convenience. But at the end of the day, even if you made three hundred dollars on a car, you've done something no one else or two thirds of America can't do. So you can't get discouraged with that. You know, I know you've seen my Ben Wiki stories, you know, selling eight cars in one day and all that stuff. And that's great. But I tell people this all the time. All we hear about is your home run stories. And this is what I say to that. I want you to look up baseball history. In the hundred years, hundred plus years of baseball, of professional baseball, how many games have been won solely because of home runs. Maybe 10, maybe. But how many games have been won because of base hits? Hell, all of them. Because those base hits is what keeps you going. You know, it's nice to get those home runs and they make for great stories and it's a great little windfall when you get it but they don't come every day. I don't care how good you are as a salesman. And anybody that tells you any different, they're lying to you. I've been in this game a long time. It's not always win after win after win. You know, so I like to tell that story to people because I hate when people get discouraged when they do have true talent because selling things is a talent. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of times people take that talent for granted. And I, and I don't like that because I look at sales just like somebody that's talented with working wood. That's your skill. Well, sales is my skill, you know? So when I see someone that has the chops to sell a car, hey, I'm gonna be supportive of them. And, and I like doing that with people. and I like keeping them motivated, you know? And, and I like to remind them that it's not about the briefcases or the watches, it's about you. Every tool you need to be good at sales, help to do anything, is right here at the end of the day. You know, if you want to be the best mechanic in the world, it's not because you got the biggest toolbox. If you want to be the best carpenter in the world, it's not because you have the most expensive hammer or the most expensive saws. If you want to be the best chef in the world, it doesn't mean you have the most expensive pots and pans. It's knowing how to use those things. That's what I'm talking about. If you want to be the best salesman in the world, this right here is a hunk of stainless. That's not a salesman. This is a salesman. Guys, I hope you got something from this random <laughs> session. You know, it was a lot of fun sharing those stories with you. But I really hope you take something from it. You know, it's not about the material things. It's about you at the end of the day. You know, every, every morning you get up, 
you get a new opportunity to get it all wrong, or who hell, who knows, you may even get it right. And the first thing that I probably think everybody's assuming by this motivational video that I'm shooting is, why in the hell is Rabbit giving us a motivational speech? Where's the models at? Where's the cool cars at? Guys, I want to tell you something. I had a damn near-death experience with that gasser. And that thing was an eye-opener from way back. And we didn't show the good footage because of the event was right there and the event videos dropped all about the same time. But now we're kind of in that gray area where we can drop it. I think you guys need to see this. We'll catch you next time here at Rabbit's Used Cars.